that this is part of my five-part series of lessons learned in 2018. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, I um, have been talking about the lessons that I've learned in 2018 and how they can apply to any business, not just property investing, which is our specialty. So the lesson I would like to focus on today is uh, something I tell to a lot of our coaching clients is to think about the lifetime cost of what you're doing. So by that I mean, and this is maybe a little bit more specific to property, but again, can be applied to other areas. Um, when you have just purchased a property and you're planning the refurbishment, I cannot tell you the number of new investors or people who have, or maybe some even, um, or not maybe, and also some uh, more seasoned and experienced investors who tell me, oh, well, you know, I'll maybe spend a few thousand pounds now, and then in a few years' time, you know, I'll save up and then do, you know, the bigger works that are required later. Now, that's fine, um, but one thing I always caution people about is to think about the lifetime costs of what your, your property um, project is going to incur. And so if you're going to be, for example, spending a lot of time and money after you've just bought a brand new property and you're going to refurbish it, don't cut corners by not doing the big expensive things like replacing the boiler or the windows or the front door or whatever it is. Um, because in the long term, it might end up actually costing you more in both time, money and hassle. When you've got a, a, an empty property that you've just bought um, and you're doing lots of work on it anyway, there is some um, you know, economies of just doing the work all at the same time and not having to worry about getting contractors in you know, at different stages a few years down the line to do bits and pieces here and there. The other thing you want to also consider is that once you've finished your property refurbishment and you've rented it out, well, then, you know, in two years time, if you need to replace the boiler, if that's going to disrupt tenants, it's going to lead to some very unhappy tenants. Uh, they might leave. They might ask for rent reductions. It'll be stress and hassle and drama for you that you probably don't want or need. Um, so whenever possible, I highly encourage people to always... Um, you know, not just take the short term view, but take the long term view. And when you are calculating things about around cost and refurbishment, you know, it's important to think not just how much it's going to cost me now, both in time, money and hassle, but how much will it cost me, you know, three years down the line, five years down the line, 10 years down the line, because for most of us who are in property investing, it is a long term investment. So sort of eat that frog now, bite the bullet, whatever phrase you want to use. But if you can, I would highly, highly encourage you for uh, you to just front load the costs, get it all done with, then your property is bulletproof and it's not going to need a lot of work and it's not going to um, you know, cause you any stress further down the line once you've got tenants in place. So I hope that was clear. I tried to uh, sort of make it very specific um, to property, but you know, I think this could apply to lots of different businesses. Again, you don't want to be sort of penny wise now and pound foolish for the future. So... Um, that's my third lesson of 2018, and I hope you'll come back to hear, hear lessons four and five. Talk to you soon. Bye.